Greetings Captain and welcome to the third VFR lesson in the Flight Sim School video tutorial series. My name is Thomas Rasmussen and to help me I have Flight Instructor Cameron aka Voidhawk9 from the explained.org forums. In the previous lesson we learned about flying straight and level and in this one we'll learn about climbs and descents. The saying goes that if you push forward on the controls the houses get bigger, if you pull back on the controls the houses get smaller. Unless you keep pulling back for too long, in which case the houses get bigger again. Don't worry, we'll dive into it in a bit more depth than that. Let's start with some theory. First of all the climb. The ability of an aircraft to climb is limited by the power its engine can produce. If we were flying an F-18 this would not be much of a limitation, however we will continue with the humble Cessna 172 for now. Consider the aircraft in straight and level flight. If we wish we can go faster while remaining level by increasing the engine power. We can use full throttle and achieve our maximum level flight speed. At this point, if we wanted to climb at this speed we would need to increase the power from the engine, but we are already at full power. Consider a car driving along a road. If you start driving up a hill, but do not push your right foot down to get more power from the engine, you will start slowing down. It's the same for an aircraft. If we slow down we need less power to maintain the speed until a point where the angle of attack of the aircraft gets too high and there is more drag being produced than at a slightly higher speed and so more power is required now to maintain the lower speed. Somewhere in the middle there is a speed at which a reasonable low amount of power is required just to maintain the speed and the engine is delivering nearly the maximum it can so we have the most excess power available to climb. This will give us our best rate of climb speed known as VY. We will gain the maximum amount of height possible in a given period of time. For a real Cessna 172 this is approximately 75 knots. Typically we climb at VY after takeoff so that we can get to a safe altitude as soon as possible. If we climb the aircraft at a higher speed, for instance 90 knots, we will cover more ground horizontally in that same period of time, but our gain in height will be less. This is known as a cruise climb and can be any speed higher than VY. This is fine if we are at a safe altitude and are trying to get to our destination quickly. Finally we will consider VX. This is a climb at a lower speed than VY. For the Cessna 172 this is approximately 55 knots. That's a lot slower than VY, so for that same period of time we will cover only a short distance horizontally. Because we are not at the ideal speed that provides the maximum excess power available, our rate of climb will be less than VY as well. So how is this useful? VX gives us the best angle of climb. We don't go up as quickly and we don't cover much ground horizontally, but we go upwards most steeply. This is useful if we happen to have tall trees at the end of the runway. For descents the power available is no longer a problem. Like a car on a hill you can roll down with little or no effort at all. To control the rate of descent we can select an airspeed to descend that, then use a power setting less than that required to maintain that speed in straightened level. In order to maintain that speed we lower the nose to go downhill at an angle steep enough to hold the speed. To descend more quickly use less power and lower the nose further to maintain the speed. Be careful, modern aircraft are quite slippery and if you descend too steeply you may exceed the aircraft's red line speeds. Let's see how to use this in practice. Ok folks, let's first set up our training situation. First load the Cessna 172 with engines running. Select the location, again I've chosen Charlie Yankee Tango Zulu to run to city airport. Set up the weather so you don't have too much wind and turbulence. I've set the time to around noon. Set your RPMs to around 1900 and do remember the parking brake. Now pause the sim by pressing P on the keyboard. 
you'll learn how to take off later once we are familiar with the various controls, but for now we'll start ourselves in the air. Go into the map by pressing M, click on your aircraft and select an altitude of 3000 feet and an airspeed of 100 knots. Unpause the sim and get the aircraft balanced in a straight and level flight. Three things need to change whenever we begin or end a climb or descent. Power, attitude and trim, or PAT. This is the same procedure used for any climb, but we'll use the Y for this example. To begin a climb at the Y, assuming there are no aircraft ahead and above us that we'll fly into, choose a reference point ahead that we will be flying straight towards, then PAT, select full power, raise the nose attitude to the appropriate level and use the trim to hold the attitude. Initially speed will gradually decrease from 100 knots, hopefully settling to approximately 75 knots. In some aircraft with full power applied and the lower speed in the climb, the aircraft will begin to yaw to the left. Counter this with rudder. In our Cessna 172 though the effect is negligible. If the speed settles too high, raise the attitude a bit and hold and trim it. Adjust again if required to get it just right. If the speed goes too low, lower the attitude to stabilize the speed at 75 knots. Just like for straight and level, make small changes to avoid overshooting. Now we are established in the climb. In this example we will level off at 5000 feet. We will need to begin to level off just a bit before we reach that altitude. Larger and faster aircraft will need to begin leveling sooner than our Cessna. 10% of the rate of climb read from the VSI vertical speed indicator works well in most cases. In the lightweight Cessna however, a little later will probably work better as this little aircraft has very little inertia. So we'll begin to level off when we're at 50 feet from our chosen altitude. When leveling off, we need to change three things. Attitude, power and trim, or APT. Slowly begin to lower the attitude. At the moment we are only doing 90 knots, so we'll need a slow cruise attitude initially. Slowly lowering the attitude until we have accelerated to 100 knots. As we reach 100 knots, reduce the power to normal cruise setting. Now trim for straightened level and we're done. A descent is similar. Again choose a feature ahead of the aircraft to track straight towards. The PAT procedure is used again. Reduce power to 1700 RPM. Lower the nose slightly, just enough to maintain the present speed, then trim to hold the attitude. You are now established in a straight descent. As with a climb, adjust the pitch attitude to get the speed just right. If you are going too fast, raise the nose a bit, if too slow, over the nose. Now we have achieved a nice rate of descent around 500 feet per minute. If we want to descend more quickly but maintain the speed, reduce the RPM, then readjust the attitude to maintain the speed. To level off at 4000 feet again. To level from a descent use PAT anticipating by about 10% of the rate of descent as seen on the VSI, increase power to normal cruise, raise the attitude to normal cruise attitude, then trim to hold it. 
Unlike the client, we don't need to worry about a slow cruise attitude at first, as we have hopefully maintained the cruise speed throughout the descent. And we're done. Let's try climb at Vx, which is 55 knots, using the same procedure as before. Select full power, raise the nose attitude to the appropriate level and use the trim to hold the attitude. Initially speed will gradually decrease from 100 knots, hopefully settling to approximately 55 knots. Note the difference in attitude, which is quite high. The aircraft will feel less stable at this speed, so you'll have to work harder to keep it just where you want it. Now let's level off at 5000 feet again. First adjust the attitude to enter a cruise climb. And when we're at 100 knots, reduce power to normal cruise and trim the aircraft. Let's also try a cruise climb at 90 knots, which is a reduced rate and angle of climb, but with a greater ground speed. APT, again, full power. Raise the attitude until the airspeed settles around 90 knots. As mentioned, a cruise climb is simply a climb at an airspeed higher than VY. Again, adjust trim so that an airspeed of 90 knots is maintained. If you are too fast, then raise the nose a bit. If you are too slow, then lower it a bit. And let's level off at 6,000 feet. Lower the attitude. Reduce the power to cruise and trim the aircraft to straighten level. Some concluding thoughts. Maintaining a climb or descent is similar to maintaining straight and level, except that you happen to be going up or down. Also, the altitude will be constantly changing and we adjust the pitch to control the airspeed. To initiate a climb or descent, use power attitude trim. When leveling off from a climb, use attitude power trim and use power attitude trim when leveling off from a descent. 
keep your changes smooth and gentle, stay in trim, it makes flying so much easier. Now you can try to replicate the climbs in the video and you can try to make some descents at different speeds and power settings noticing the effect of the rate of descent. In the next lesson we'll talk about medium turns. I hope you enjoyed the tutorial and found it useful. If so, please remember to share, like and subscribe. From Cameron and I, thank you so much for watching and see you very soon.